height, but I don't know what they are. So here comes my issue. But let's look at this. Not everything has to be so complicated. Mm hmm. The long side is 10 units. Now, what this used to be was a big 120 degree angle. You can see this. We broke it in half. So now, instead of being all this is 120, this part of it is just 60. This part is 90, and this part is 30. Well, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle going for us. Actually, we have two of them, because if I bend this in half, I'm getting pretty decent at half folds real fast. Um, if I break it in half, I have two 30, 60, 90 triangles that I'm dealing with, which is, you know, kind of an okay state to deal with if I think about, oh, a 30, 60, 90 being a special triangle. So in my box, or on my paper, I should say, I'm going to write down area equals base times height divided by 2, and then I'm going to start doing, go to my little thinking box about triangles. Maybe I should make it a triangle, but then it wouldn't break it into four equal parts. I'm going to think about what a generic 30, 60, 90 triangle looks like, and that's pretty good. Uh, it's actually legible. I was a little worried. It's in maroon, too, so very Tennessee high-ish. Um, my 30, 60, 90, I decided to name the small side or the base side uh, G for generic. This is a generic triangle. The side across from 90 degrees is two times the generic side, and because I'm breaking a triangle down into parts of three, or sorry, a rectangle, square actually, here's my square. If I'm doing the same thing I was doing before with the three columns and rows and things, a 45 degree angle is split in half, but a 30 degree angle, and that's not even close to a 30 degree angle, so I apologize, and a 60 degree angle break it into essentially three equal parts. And of course that's a terrible version, but pretend you're watching an avatar or you're watching cats and you're pretending that they're cats even though you know they're not, or that blue aliens exist even though you know they don't because all aliens are gray. Anyway, this breaks it into one, two, three equal parts. So this bottom part is I'm breaking a square into three parts, so it's square root of three. That would be the 60 side. This is something you're going to have to know if you haven't already learned it. You should make a little card for yourself and look at it every day when you brush your teeth. I'm sure you all count when you brush your teeth. So maybe you could do generic, generic times square root of 3, 2 times generic, whatever you want to do. Anyway, we have to know this before we move on. And as a little bit of bonus education, bonus education, we're going to talk about a 45, 45, 90 triangle because I haven't covered it all that much. If I have a 90 degree angle and one of them is 40 and one of the other angles is a 45, this one has to be a 45. This is a special triangle as well. It's the hidden one. If this is 45 and this is 45, the angle's measure defines how long the side is. So the generic side of this one is both the legs because these have to be equal. This is what's called an uh, isosceles triangle. So when I make a 45 degree angle inside of a square, it breaks that 90 degree angle in half and thus creates a square broken into one, two parts. This indicates that that side is me breaking that tr uh, rectangle into two equal parts, or square I should say, into two equal parts. So the part across from 90 or the side across from 90 is generic times the square root of 2. And generic is just anything. If this is a 5, so is this. This is 5 times the square root of 2. That's the 45, 45, 90. And so ends our bonus education. And now we go back to the original problem. Now I've got this generic triangle I'm dealing with, and I'm also dealing with this triangle. Like, you can't win. So I'm going to draw out a small version of this part of the triangle. I'm actually going to bend this over. So I'm going to do this one right here. I've got a 60 degree angle. I've got a 90 degree angle right here. And I've got a 30 degree angle. Now from my generic, I realize that the side across from the 30 is whatever the generic side happens to be. I know that the side across from 90 is 2 times that number. And then I know that the 60 is generic times the square root of 3, because once again I'm breaking that square into 3 equal parts. So 
that's where the square root of 3 part comes in. Now, I'm going to have to look at the actual triangle and compare it to my generic. Now, in my generic triangle, uh, the long side is 2 times g. Here, that side is the same thing as 10, so I'm going to, and this is a u, it looks like a 10 to the fourth power, but it's not, it's supposed to be units, I just wrote it in the wrong spot. In fact, it's so confusing, I'm just going to go ahead and mark it out, we're only going to worry about the 10 right now. So this is nothing, I could draw skull and crossbones, but it's way too small for me to even try to pull that one off. So 2g is equal to 10. That's a great starting point for us, because all I have to do is solve this equation like I would anything else. 2 times g, because remember if they touch, they multiply. I'm going to divide to get rid of it, because it's opposite sides of the line, thus opposite operations. g is equal to 10 divided by 2, or 5. I'm going to write this up here a little nicer. g equals 5. So over here, this is 5. And this is just whatever the generic side is, times the square root of 3. So this new is 5 times the square root of 3. I'm going to write these a little bigger and sort of a darker pen color real fast. be nice if I ever bought myself a nice set of Sharpies with not so fine tips like regular tipped ones in multiple colors, but that's coming. Now, here's the triangle I'm actually dealing with. It's the whole thing. So as you can see, the height of that triangle is 5 matches up perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and write in my question over here in the triangle section, which I think the triangle itself is blue, so I'm going to continue a blue trend. Even though I did, a, and now it's, it looks like it's bruised. So I'm going to do area equals the height of 5 times base divided by 2. Now I need to figure out what the base is. As you can see, this part is 5 times the square root of 3. And there are two of those. So I'm going to do 5 times the square root of 3 plus 5 times the square root of 3. So I'm going to do this. Square roots here act in a similar fashion to um, like, an, like a variable term. So I would say that it's important that we um, treat it in that fashion. So say it's 5x. Well, 5x plus 5x is 10x. So in this case, 10 to 5 times the square root of 3 plus 5 times the square root of 3 equals 10 times the square root of 3. That would be our total base. So both of these together, 10 times the square root of 3. So this is 10 times the square root of 3. So I'm going to work that one out in the old calculator. And this is supposed to be a 3. Someone's nitpicking it at home if you're actually watching it. 10 times the square root of 3 times 5 equals 86.6. And then I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to make this into a two-step scenario. Divide, and I get 43.3. Now, let's see if this makes any sense. Oh, and by the way, this is unit squared. Let's see if this makes any sense based on our picture. We've got this and this. The whole thing equals 104.7 right there. Uh, that part is 43, so, you know, it's a little less than half. And this looks like a little less than half, so that makes a lot of sense. So in the last step, all I have to do to find my segment length is pull out the old triangle. So I've got my segment, which is this part, and I had the whole sector, this whole gimmick. So to find the segment, I'm going to start out uh, with area of the sector. I'm going to put that in red pen because the sector was red originally. Then I'm going to subtract out area of triangle. I'm going to put that in blue. And then that should give me the area of the segment.
So, mathematically, area of a sector is 104.7 units squared minus 43.3 units squared for the area of the old triangle there. And I'm going to work that out. sixty one point four so my final answer for area of segment is sixty one point four units squared so that's all you've got to do you've got to break the picture down into parts circle first then find sector size or area then you want to find the segment area uh, by oh, then you find the triangle area you take that triangle away from that sector and that leaves you with segment. Uh, the only difficult part about this is you did have to figure out what the area of the triangle was and that was a little bit difficult. So um, good luck with these. There's just a few more for you to do and I'll try to post the assignment itself with the answers so that you can see them.